Oh boy, guys, do I have a big freaking news for you guys. It's, it's, I don't like to do clickbaity intros or anything, but this thing is amazing. So as some of you may know, I got my positive COVID test on Sunday, Sunday afternoon. After I was finishing recording one of the videos, actually, um, I was feeling a little bit bad and we wanted to get like a, any doubts out of the equation. So I took one home test and positive. Then my wife took it. Uh, we, uh, uh, like our baby did it as well. They were negative. So the best advice was isolate. So I've been here in the bunker in the studio for the past week. I'm going to be here until probably like next Tuesday or something until all of my symptoms are gone. I'm feeling okay, really tired to be honest, uh, but no major symptoms. So I'm taking the medicines. Everything should be fine. Uh, hopefully it remains that way. And in this free time, I've been exploring some really, really, really interesting things. So I want to show you something that I can't believe I didn't know beforehand. And the title is, of course, on the video. It's called Arnold Imagers, okay? So uh, one of the things that I was really praising Blender about, and still really cool, by the way, is the new denoiser that it has, right? So you can get really, very fast and clean renders because it has uh, one of the denoisers working in real time and you get like super amazing images. Well, Arnold used to have one and then on version 2022, it just kind of got lost in translation or something. And I, I just didn't like bother looking for it, but it used to be right here. So there used to be like a, a like an option here in the, in the system or in the AOVs called denoiser. And as you can see, it's no longer here. It's this one right here, the output denoising AOVs, but that's not what I was looking. I was looking for this like super fast, quick denoiser for this image, like not an, another denoiser that acts after the fact. So um, it turns out that Arnold Render has this thing called imagers. And I didn't know about them and probably you didn't either. So here's a quick rundown of what they do. Imagers are post-processing things, like post-processing filters that you can add to your image after the fact, okay? So let's go over one of like the simplest ones, which is this one, which is called Lens Effect. Really, really cool. Uh, for this one, I do recommend working with CPU. So as you can see, I'm gonna render here real quick. And um, now what's gonna happen is actually, like you can do this on, on either part. Look, you can do this on the render options, like right here. As you can see, uh, I have this uh, element right here on the AI imager lens effect, or, 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 or if you go into the render view, the Arnold render view, and you render, let's go to shot cam, there we go. And you click this little icon right here, you're gonna have, uh, hey, where are you guys? There we go. On the, on the post effects, you're now gonna have this option right here. So right now we're using this called imager lens effect and uh, the rendering is taking quite a little bit. You can stop it at any time. And now what you can do is you can add vignettes super quick. Instead of having to go to Photoshop, like you just add the vignette right here. This is the lens effect again. And you can add bloom. Bloom is the thing that makes like hard, uh, like, uh, like shiny areas like shine a little bit more. And there's a lot of things you can do with the bloom. You can like increase or decrease the threshold. So every single part of the image uh, blooms. And as you can see, this is done in post. So it's after the fact that you've rendered, after, after the render is finished, you apply all of these effects. So it makes it for like a really easy, simple render without having to worry too much about uh, render time, right? Because all of these effects can be done after the fact. And you can actually render a batch, like render from this or like a, like a sequence, and it will apply all of the effects that you build uh, on top of it. So there's a lot of, of really cool effects. Let me stop it right here. Say remove it better. You can also add them right here. Um, we have this color correct, color curves, and then here are the denoisers. And one denoiser that's really, really, really good is this denoiser, sorry, denoiser optics. So I'm just gonna click it here. And now that the denoiser is, is uh, in the system. And when it starts rendering, you can see that it's actually already giving me the denoised image. Amazing. Like I, I'm not like the render is not even finished and it's already applying the denoiser because the optics is using some sort of like NVIDIA thing. Now, I think if you don't have an NVIDIA, you can use one of the other ones like the OIDN or the denoiser noise. Um, but look at this, like the render is going to take about a minute at most. It's a 1K render. We're using UDEMS, by the way, like this Canon, I made it with, with UDEMS. So it's really, 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 really heavy in regards to, to texture space. But as you can see, we're almost done here and uh, the noise is like perfect. Very similar to what we get in Blender. So it says it took like a second to finish. Of course, that's not true. Um, but yeah, you can see the result here. And here's the kicker. You can combine images. There's only a couple of things that you need to be aware of. So if you're combining um, this guy's right here, let me stop this. And I'm going to add like, let's say a, um, a lens effect. The denoiser has to be at the top of the stack. Okay. That's very important. That denoiser needs to be at the top of the stack because it, need to happens, it needs to happen first. So now if I render again, 
you can see, well, let's stop it and render again. There we go. You can see that this is working. And a couple of seconds after we start rendering, the denoiser is going to kick in. And uh, it will be like that. The, the further you get like the, the processing of the image, you can see there how the denoiser is changing. And it's uh, and it's getting us like the clean noise, right? So pretty much like no noise on this area, which is amazing. And uh, at any point, I can just stop the image, go down here and start applying like this effects right here. So let's add a little bit of vignette. Uh, let's have a little bit of uh, of bloom. So you can see the bloom is gonna start affecting the the lower parts first, like these areas right there. And if we start decreasing this, that's the first area because that's the most intense area where there's more like light. So let's go like really high here, and then lower this. So the threshold is gonna be low, but I do want there to be a little bit of like bloom everywhere. We can increase the radius to make this a little bit softer. And now we should start seeing like a little bit of bloom everywhere there we go so now it looks like a like a magic scene right so so yeah there's a lot of cool things that you can do right now since we don't have like any like specific bright areas in this area i don't think their bloom is, is doing like a nice job um but you can see the power of this now there's a couple of more uh, the, uh like uh imagers that i want to show you so this one let's let's remove the lens effect or actually let's add it so let me add the lens effect and i just want to have a little bit of like vignette there we go now i'm gonna add for instance like a like a color color color, color correct and the color correct is great because, as you may imagine, we can change the saturation. We can increase it to make it like more colory. We can change the contrast. Okay, and all of this is like post production. It's, it's it's kind of like doing compositing. I know it's not compositing, but it's similar to doing compositing because we don't have to jump into Photoshop or anything. We can just, just do everything here. And when we save this image, this is what we're gonna get. Like we're just seeing right here. That's your final result. Uh, let's change like the gamma, for instance, a little bit. And we can create some amazing, amazing things. Now, if you're a little bit more uh, knowledgeable than I am in, in post-production, you have, for instance, the color curves, and you can like change the curves and stuff. Like, There's a lot of things that you can do here with the imagers. But now I'm going to show you one that's going to blow your mind. So the one that I'm going to show you is called, it's called the light linker. Right now, on this scene, I have three lights. I have this main light. I have this uh, rim light, which is like orangey. It's like bluish. And then it's this, uh, the field light, which is just an, an ambient occlusion. What you're going to do is you're gonna go to each light and you're gonna go down here to where it says AOV light group and you're gonna name them with the name that they usually are. For, for instance, this one is the main light. So on the AOV light group, I'm gonna call this a main light. And then this one is called the rim light. So or it's, it's my rim light. I didn't call it rim light here, but I am writing it down on the AOV light group. It's down here. Like if you just, if you check the, the attributes of your light, it's gonna be down here uh, below the visibility levels. And also for the HDR. So right here, AOV light group, perfect. When you do this and you jump back into your um, imagers, you can add an imager called a light mixer imager. Now, very important, the light mixer, and you can see it here, needs to go at the very top of the stack, okay? So when you're like, um, like moving all of your imagers, if you're using light mixer, it should always be at the top of the stack. After that one, you should have the denoiser. And after the denoiser, everything else, okay? That's the that's the way they programmed it because otherwise, if you bring the light mixer down, some of the things from the light mixer won't won't be like properly denoised and, and you get like a like a mess. So the proper workflow whenever you're using imagers is light mixer at the top if you're using one, um, image denoiser after that, and then all of the other effects that you might want to add. And uh, there we go. So as you can see, my render is finished 24 seconds and you can see all of the things are applying. So we have the nice little vignette we have, which is the lens effect, the denoiser, you can see like super, super clean, like really, really clean compared to what we had before. And uh, the color correct, we changed a couple of the parameters, but here's the magic. Look at this beautiful thing. We're gonna go, let's open this up a little bit so that we can see it better. And you're gonna see that now on the light mixer, we have all of the lights that we write right here. Main light, rain light, the default light, which it's just the default light, of course, and field light. Now, remember what the main light was? That was the blue channel, right? So at any point in the imager, I can change the exposure of my light. Um, I think we need to play this. There we go. Let's stop it. There we go. So now, I think, it, let, let me do it again, because I think it didn't regist re register like the first time. So let's just wait for this to finish. Mm -hmm. Let's stop it right there. I think that should be good enough. So now, as you can see, 
I can change the exposure in real time, in render time. It's kind of like like doing this uh, in again with AOV passes and, and post production in Nuke or in After Effects. You can change the exposure of the object. So let's say you do this render and you show it to your client, and they're like, "Ah, it's cool, but can it be a little bit like brighter on the on the main light?" Yes, of course, my friend. If you do this properly before doing the render, you won't have to render again. Like right now, this is a just one minute render. But imagine if you do like a really really complex scene, like a, like a room with a lot of props and glass and stuff, and and then you show it to the to the client and it took I don't know three hours to render and then he wants changes. Ugh, that's the kind of thing that always makes it difficult, right? So, but if you do this workflow, you're gonna be able to tweak and change a lot of things, like the rim light. Let's say we want to lower the rim light. We just remove it. We can pretty much remove the rim light entirely from the composition if the client doesn't like it. We can't remove the reflections though, unfortunately, uh, but we can remove the rim light like quite a bit, like lower it quite, quite a bit or make it a lot harsher. Like you can do this, all of this sort of things because all of this information is stored on the render image thanks to the AOVs and this light mixer. Feel light, you wanna make the, the whole thing darker? No problem at all. Let's just lower or darken this thing a lot. And there's no more fill light pretty much, like we've eliminated the fill light. Or let's say, uh, for instance, that my main light right here, it's uh, it's nice, but my client wants it like green or something. Just grab the green color. And now the light is green. <laughs> so there's a lot of really, really cool stuff that you can do with this uh, sort of elements, with this light mixer. And it's so fast because at any point you just like change things, like modify elements and, and you're good to go. So yeah. Imagers, I didn't know they exist. They they haven't been around for long. Uh, I was checking the documentation. They were released like one year or a year and a half ago. I just don't know why I didn't knew about them. It's one of those informations that's quite hidden. Uh, but yeah, really, really cool. And again, as I mentioned, like if you change anything here, like let me go to my shot cam, panels, look selected. Oh, actually, that's not the one. Where is it? There we go. Panels, look selected. And if I like rotate this around and create like a different composition, and I render now, everything that I just did is going to be applied to this new composition. So you can animate your camera, you can batch render the sequence, and again, when you batch render, like this is the render that you're going to get, because what's happening, very similar to Blender and other softwares, you're rendering, and then you're applying you're applying all of these effects onto your image, and then you're getting, you're getting the final result. So this image that you're seeing right here, this is what gets exported, and you just like plug this in and any other like uh, image editing software, and you can continue working, but again, like this sort of control on the lights, on the denoiser, on the lens effect, on the color correction, and on all of the other things that you can change, tone map, white balance. It's amazing, guys. It's it's a really, really cool. It's a, it's a tool that I didn't know we had here in Maya, and it's great. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. And um, yeah, that's it. So tomorrow we'll continue with more 3D. Again, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm locked down here on my, uh, on my little bunker. And um, yeah, that's it, guys. Let me know in the comments what else you want to learn. Uh, we still have the Lighthouse uh, pending, so I'm probably going to be working on that one for a little bit this next couple of days. Um, during the live stream, if you didn't see the live stream, you can go into our channel, go into lives, and uh, there's the recording of the live stream. We talked a little bit about uh, flames and, and, uh, and smoke and that sort of thing. Just a quick overview. So yeah. That's it, guys. I'll see you back tomorrow. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe. We're really close to 19K subscribers. I know that the channel says we're already there. Maybe at the time of this uh, recording or when this gets published, we will hit the actual number. But we're really sure we're like 50 subscribers short. We'll do something special. We need to think about, like, give me suggestions on what to do for the 19K special. Because after that, our next milestone, and hopefully we can get this what, by, end, by the end of February, that would be great. 20K, 20K subscribers. So yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for all the support and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.